Live from a NASCAR bunker in Kyle's parents' basement, it's Turn the Radio Off with Mike Parsons and Kyle Bauer. Facebook.com slash TTRO show. Follow along on Twitter.com slash TTRO show or just listen right now. It's Turn the Radio Off. Well, I'm, I'm glad we're back doing this again, Kyle. Yep, me too. I've missed us. Well, you know, all we're doing is, uh, is living down to the podcaster stereotype, which uh, for many years we've prided ourselves on our consistency. And now that we're in our 30s and life piles more and more on top of us, uh, you know, we'll, 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 we'll get to the podcast when we get to it. But uh, we're back for this week, at least. We're, we're start, uh, every winning streak starts with one. Remember that. Yeah. And uh, I know, and, and a lot's changed since then. Uh, I, I have a new car. Right. That's cool. And, I, and I feel people, like that's that made me a new man, but well, not really... I feel like people mark the passage of time. Still cripplingly depressed. Sure, of course. And you know what? what? That's never going to change because you're a terrible person, but we're friends anyway. I am? Not really, actually. Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought what that What the would, hell? I, I'm sorry. I thought that would make you laugh. Usually, you must be depressed because usually when I take um, shots at you under my breath, you usually get a chuckle. No, no. I'm very sensitive right now. I'm, I'm actually concerned about you. I'm also constipated again. That's back. <laughs> well, you know what? So maybe I'm not a new person at all. Right. Well, you know what? Maybe you're not depressed. You're just constipated. Take a uh, the, the, choke the, down a shot glass full of apple cider vinegar, and uh, you won't be able to leave the house for a week. The old Mazda commercials used to be Zoom Zoom, and I thought that's what would happen to my colon. Right. <laughs> once I got a Mazda, right. and you, that's not. You traded at your, all what's happened to my colon. You traded your good old American car. Mazda used to be American car, right? It used to be a Ford. They, they had a relationship with Ford for several years, and it recently ended because Ford gave them the old heave-ho because North American sales weren't strong enough. Yeah. And I didn't find this out until the morning that I signed the car. Oh. And, and I was actually mortified because here's the thing you know me i'm a pretty forward thinking guy you sound exactly like i did when i got my kia but i apologized left and right but i said look it was cheap and it's good on game (laughs) but but this is what happened okay of course i i i went back to a good old uh american chrysler voyager because i love this country and i want to make it great again but what but what happened was I thought I was buying a car that was assembled in Flat Rock, Michigan. Sure. It hasn't been assembled in Flat Rock since 2013. Mm. I was mistaken. Sorely mistaken. Was it at least assembled in America? No. Mexico. Wow. But you know what my determining factor was? I called my dad the morning of. I yeah. had to have my dad co-sign on the vehicle. Sure, for, he wasn't happy. For insurance purposes. Of course. Uh, because anybody who knows insurance, uh, car auto insurance in Michigan. Right. doesn't go down until you're 52. R- exactly. So I had to get him to co-sign to get the insur- insurance payments down under $400 a month. Uh, so anyway... Uh, I call him and, and I say, Dad, you know, I just did a little bit of last-second research on the Mazda, and I found out that they're not, in fact, made in Flat Rock like I thought they were. Okay. Uh, they are, in fact, made in Mexico right. now. Right. And that- on the eve of Labor Day, you go out and spit in the face of, uh, of, of the American Union worker, to which your father said... <laughs> well, my dad has no problem spitting in the face of the union worker. Wow. Uh, <laughs> hey, What's your dad going to do now that uh, everyone at Fox News is is uh, suing Roger Ailes? He's going to be happy once Roger Ailes sues the New Yorker out of business. Right, Since right. that's a precedent that's now been set well, look, if these, with if these, the Gawker, with what happened to Gawker. If these women didn't want to be harassed, then why did they, why, why did they decide to be women? 
That's a great question. Yeah. I'm sure that's actually going to come up in testimony, and it's it's going to help in Roger Ailes' verdict. I wasn't planning on talking about this. Obviously, Roger Ailes is being uh, he's being sued for twenty million dollars by Gretchen Carlson, and he's going to counter sue the New Yorker for writing an expose on well, him for it, probably about three billion. Here's what's going to put him into bankruptcy. Here's what happened. Um, the court ruled in favor of Gretchen Carlson. Right, uh, but 20th Century Fox is going to pay the twenty million dollars, and then they're going to pay Roger Ailes forty million dollars to GTFO. <laughs> Isn't it incredible how that works? Yeah, how this fat old gelatinous white man just no matter what he does, he wins. Right, he's a supervillain. He, he really is. Yeah. he's a supervillain. He kind of looks like the Penguin. That's why he hates Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton is also a supervillain. Same thing with Donald Trump, but all these people are supervillains. And the only one who wasn't a supervillain was the, the the cranky old nerdy scientist that no one wanted to listen to. Remember that meme that was going around over the summer or last summer that Bernie Sanders is the scientist in the movie that everybody ignores who's trying to warn everyone of impending doom. Oh, right. Yeah, because he's always fiddling with his papers and his hair is all disheveled yeah. and stuff and no one takes him serious. Yeah, it, 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 that's exactly what it is. That meme was so true. That's Bernie Sanders, and then this is the rest of our candidates, just a bunch of supervillains. Well, when Gretchen Carlson first came out with her um, accusations, I remember that Sean Hannity went on uh, a Roger Ailes defense tour. Bill O'Reilly goes on one of the late-night talk shows and defends him. If you're accused of sexual harassment, do you want Bill O'Reilly defending you? I rem- you remember those steamy, unwanted voicemails he left on that, that uh, Fox News staffer's voicemail? But the graphic- loofah. Graphically talking about uh, what he wants to do with one of those loofah things. And then, of course, everyone got pissed off at Megyn Kelly because they said, Hey, Megan, we need a skirt like you out there defending Roger Ailes. Then this will all go away. Yeah, yeah. And Megan Kelly wouldn't. And then Andrea uh, Tintaro came out and was talking about sexual harassment. And uh, all of a sudden... Uh, was Tintaro the one brunette that they had? Yes. Yeah, they had that one short-haired brunette that they'd uh, plug in on the weekends, No, right? she wasn't short-haired. She was, on, she was on one of the... I think she was on the Five or Fox and Friends. She had a pretty oh, prominent role. She okay. was... Uh, I, I believe she was Hispanic. Very beautiful. But of course, they all are on Fox News, but... Yeah. Um, and Gretchen Carlson... Not Gretchen Carlson. Greta Van Susteren uh, quit today out of nowhere. But anyway, uh, what did your father say about you buying a Mazda? <laughs> <laughs> that was a big digression I know. there, wasn't it? Well, it's, 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 like an old, it's like old school turn the radio off. Back into form, eh? Yeah. Uh, no, but my dad was... was he was... So happy that I was having second thoughts. My parents, from the second they heard I wanted a Mazda, yeah. were disgusted. Why? Disgusted. They didn't want me anywhere near a foreign car. Okay. Even under the misunderstanding that the car, the misconception that the car was co-owned by right. Ford. Sure. They wanted me to not even bother with anything that wasn't a GM, to the point where they were trying to bully me into getting a, a GMC or a Buick just like them. Because nothing says you're a 30-year-old independent male like getting the exact same car as your parents because they got you a discount on it. Hell, I'd take it. I thought about it. Yeah. I did. I did think about it for like a day. And they took me to the dealership. They scheduled the appointment for me, took me to the dealership, went as far as to start the paperwork. For a, a Buick? For a Buick, wow. yes. It, that's how hard they tried to pressure me into getting one. Wow. And it, to the point where I, I got in a shouting match with them in the parking lot. Wow. It was all a very embarrassing ordeal. And you and, said, I'm not going to live my life for you, Dad, and got into your uh, got into your Mazda, which is a sign of 30-year-old rebellion sitting out in my, uh, my driveway right now. My life is a goddamn joke. You know what? And every time... No wonder sh- why my girlfriend left me. Yeah. Like, like, I have these moments where, like, I wonder... Why my girlfriend left me? <laughs> I think of scenarios like this. You should call. You should call her up and tell her how you stood up to your parents. It might turn her on and win her back. You know what's sad? I texted her about it. Yeah, what'd she say? Nothing back. 
Uh, she she was like, Kyle, it's ridiculous that she even have to deal with this in the first place. Wow. I don't want to hear this conversation. Wow. Well, at least yeah. she didn't get the dreaded K. I think she wanted to, but she yeah. had to appease me. Yeah. She's like, oh, God, he's trying to win me back again. Right. Well, <laughs> you know what? If I were you, I would say, so you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, it's like... Hey, baby, I stood up to my mom and dad. You want to ride Space Mountain one more time? Space Mountain is what Ric Flair called his penis in the 80s. I've learned that. I remember that. that. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, finally. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but no, it, it was. It was a battle back and forth. And and this was all off my dad leveraging him just having to co-sign because right. of the insurance. Because... I simply put, I wouldn't be able to afford it. Okay, let me ask you this: How much money? How much more are you spending a month with that Mazda over the Buick your parents made, wanted you to get? Thirty-five dollars a month more. Okay, it's worth it. Yeah, it's, it's wor- totally worth the it. The price of being your own man: thirty-five dollars a month. <laughs> I'm proud of you. A hundred, I, I would have said you're an idiot, but thirty-five, okay. I wanted that damn Mazda, but but this story is so all over the place because. I, I never even finished telling you oh, what there's more. I said to my dad, I'm like, Dad, give me a second. Because there was a Chevy Cruze hatchback edition okay. that was coming out. And I, I really wanted a car with a some hatch. extra space, sure. like a hatchback, because hauling around my hockey equipment, I want to do a lot of camping next summer. Sure. All of Functional that. and sporty. Exactly. Which is what the Mazda 3 is. Thank you very much. Wh- which is uh, how I would describe you if I was writing your Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> Still hung up on his ex-girlfriend, yet recently stood up to his dad. Wow, that's perfect. Yeah. I I really should consider that. Yeah, that'd be great. You're, anyway, you're welcome. Uh, but what? Yeah, what I was gonna do? Uh, what I was gonna do is I was gonna go check where the Chevy Cruze hatchback was manufactured. And where the Ford Focus hatchback was manufactured. Okay. And where the Jeep Renegade was manufactured. And I'd reopen my options sure. based on that. I, I bet you none of them were made in America. All of them are made in Mexico, just like the Mazda 3. I told my dad that, and I said, you know what? Might as well get the Mazda 3 then. Thank you, NAFTA. You know what? You got me a Mazda today. We're going to build a wall and make Mazda pay for it. Coming up after the break, we're actually going to start the show. Let's turn the radio off on the internet. Less rock. More talk. Turn the radio off. Become a fan at peoplehatemypodcast.com. So uh, let me repeat your order here. That'll be one double cheeseburger. Ching. Large fries and a large soda. Ching. Two kids meals and two medium sodas. One chicken sandwich, large fries, and a vanilla milkshake. But a bing! That'll be sixty-two dollars and seventy-five cents. We're a little shy. Remember when you could feed your whole family fast food for less than ten bucks? Well, at Rallies, you still can. Rallies has it right. Switch off the radio. Turn off the radio. Uh, shut down your radio system. We'll do it live. Uh, what? I can all write it and we'll do it live. Turn the radio off. There you go. I'm drunk. So am I the only one? When I was a kid, the first day of school was the worst day of my life. Oh God, terrible, right? The worst. Uh, as our old friend, the real deal would say, um, the uh, triumph. The triumph of Friday is only um, overshadowed by the grimness of Monday. Now you take that and magnify that by 100, and that's the first day and the last day of school. Right. Yes. Oh, that's a great way to put it. The only cool thing for me about the first day of school is is modeling your new clothes and your new backpack and stuff. Right. You go to Kohl's and you get your mom buys you four shirts and four pants and you're like, all right, let's do it. New year, new me. The cool thing for me is... Everything you thought you knew about Mike Parsons has changed. What I'm doing is I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt unbuttoned with a short sleeve shirt underneath it. The cool thing about me is I still get to experience that when I take my dad's Kohl's cash... (laughs) Yeah. And I go shopping and I come into work on a Monday looking all, you know, looking all nice right. with my new clothes. I mean, for me, that's like the first day of school all over again. Right. And you're thinking, okay, 
Um, I got to make sure that this will be ready three weeks after school starts for school picture day. Yes, exactly. I mean, I wish that we had an employee badge that we had to wear. Right. Just so I had an excuse to go out and get those new clothes. Right. Or every year um, you get like a, you get a new driver's license picture, so it's kind of like school picture day every year. The, one of the funniest things is that you see it a little bit in high school, uh, like, you know, and, and I mean, I don't know how the hell the kids dress in high school today, but uh, you see it, you would see it a little bit in high school, but you especially saw it when you get to college, uh, The like the less and less you cared about dressing up right. for class. right. I mean, it, it got to the point where, like, you're wearing, like, an, an inside-out T-shirt and, like, a dirty pair of gym shorts and, right. like, Senioritis. flip-flops right. and stuff. Like, you, you just don't give a damn I anymore. I think junior year is probably the last year um, that, that people actually go back to school shopping. Yeah, where they yeah. actually try. Right. And, like, well, one of the fun, funny things I remember from, like, working retail is that you would see kids of that age actually shop for back to school clothes right but i don't think they would actually ever wear them right i think they would wear them for the weekend probably because but, by then uh, they they have jobs and their parents aren't taking them to Kohl's. because Kohl's is where you go it, it it's like a law i think it's in the bible that every kid well, who grows up in the suburbs has to do their back to school shopping at Kohl's or burlington co when you're younger yes when you hit a threshold i think once you get to middle school that's when you're to your american eagles yeah I don't know if Farrell Postel is still in business, but that that's when you get to your American Eagles and your Hollisters right. and your various skateboard shops, For your the Pack Sons and all that. Are preps still your looked Pillies. down? Are preps still looked down upon? I don't know. It's been a while since. Is preps even a? Uh, are I they, think preppy's back in. Yeah, I think nerds. I would are, say bye. I, I think ner- nerds are are nerds still in. Well, I think nerdy's still in to an extent, not as much as it was a couple of years ago. I would say by now the preps are probably cycling back in. Everything yeah. goes on a twenty-year cycle. Remember that scathing um, commentary and every every uh, every punks. And we know they're opposers because if you're a real punk, you don't call yourself a punk. You say labels are for cans, man. I like what I like, and if I <laughs> punk, that's it. But every uh, you know every uh, every one with a forty-one or or. 182 at the end of their their screen name they'd always put that uh, way message up uh if abercrombie uh said that breathing wasn't trendy anymore 98 percent of the teenage population would suffocate you know what i'm gonna admit and, and i'm gonna admit this today i mean there there are still like if if i could afford it that's a i can't afford it I, uh, damn it there are some abercrombie and hollister clothing I, i'd like right well and now that you're paying an extra 35 dollars a month just to stick it to your old man you're never going to be able to afford it they have some great plaid and, and flannel shirts problem i mean you I was know always too fat yeah they yeah. do have they do put a weight limit and i mean that 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 portion of the of the you know that whole it always smelled very good in there though the body image ideals that abercrombie and hollister put out there i don't support uh but you know everything else i mean they're they're actual clothes but see for me you know now i'm about the you know the the raw floor and the outlet raw floor not the actual full retail raw floor and i can never afford that but the outlet raw sure. floor and uh you know the the uh oh my goodness i'm forgetting the name that's okay. Um, no, no, no. But I was going to say, there. The ultimately, though, it all does come back to J. Crew. J. Ah. Crew is what I was thinking of. But obviously, the Did outlet. You join J. a Crew, rowing team? Not, not the full retail yeah. J. Crew. I can never for that. Right. And then, and then there's Coles because Coles has the nice Sonoma brand that rips off of both of those brands for cheap. And then I take my dad's Coles cash, right. And I get it for practically nothing. Right. I wore Hugo Boss because I was fat. And I look like a I look like a little roly poly suburban Biggie Smalls in seventh grade. Oh, I bet you looked fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Um, but 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 seriously, um, the first day of school, first days was the worst days. Now we drink in champagne when we thirst days. First day of school was terrible, and nothing was okay until October because it was Halloween season. Just that first September is a drag. Oh. Wow, yeah. Right. I, I like it now, but back then I hated it. No, September is still a drag today. I mean, really. 
Like, it doesn't everybody, and, and I mean, I'm not going to make a Green Day joke here. Right. I'm not. So we're not going to do that. Turns out they're playing the Fillmore at the end of September, which I would love to go to before they started putting out crap. Yeah. I'm I, that guy. I'm 32, and I, <laughs> and, and, and I hate everything Green Day's put out since my mid-20s. You know what we could do instead? What? Go to Kohl's. Hell yeah. yeah. Can we split the Kohl's cash? No. Ah, That's all for me. You I know need what? that to you know live, what? Mike. You know what? Forget it, Kyle. Do you know why? Because my wife probably has a whole bunch of double coupons, so you and your Coles cast can go fuck yourselves. That's okay, because I got more coupons than you do. <laughs> do you, do you just want to go? You just want to walk around Coles with our Coles cash and coupons and throwing it out like the like Joker at the end of 1989 Batman? The best thing that you could do in Coles is do that yeah. because they give you the ability right. to. Sometimes you go up there and they tell you about a coupon you didn't know exist. And you're like, ha, sucker, you just gave me another 15% off. I used to criticize my dad for this, but I've, I've figured it out. I've realized that the hustle is real. Kohl's is paying you to buy their clothes. It's incredible. Right, it's, it's part of the marketing is what it is. It is. It really is. Mike, can we get this show sponsored by Kohl's? I think so. They can pay us in Kohl's cash. They can pay us in discounts. Why not more Kohl's cash? Yeah. Hey, hi, friends. Mike Parsons here from Turn the Radio Off. You've heard me talking about Kohl's cash for a while, which is why I'm so excited to announce our new partnership. You can play it over the intercom. That's right. It's perfect. That's good. That's good. It's perfect. All right. Oh, my goodness. They'll play a little, like, a uh, two-tone. Right. Ding, ding. Right. And then you say, hello, friends. Kyle Barr from Turn the Radio Off. Back to school already? Why not take a... Uh, and take then a you tr- come in, oh, man, what a drag. <laughs> oh, what a drag. And you say, no, 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 it can't be a drag with these savings. <laughs> we'll write our own scripts. Yeah, I, I really think that's... it's Okay, let's try to improvise it right now. I okay. thought we just did, but no, okay. No, no, like better, though. Okay. Better, though. Do you want See? me to start off with the two-tone? Uh, yeah, and, and I'll come in with the hello, friends, okay. and then you do with the... Oh, man, what a drag. Right, and right. Then... we do our shtick. Okay, ready? Okay. <clears throat> ding, ding. Hello, friends. This is Kyle Barr from Turn the Radio Off. Oh, man, what a drag. Why are you so down, Mike Parsons? Because it's back to school, and I want to kill myself. Don't kill yourself. How about you kill How about you? Wait, no, no. Hold on. Don't kill yourself. How about, how about you? Kill high prices. How about you kill high prices instead? What do you mean, Kyle? I mean with Kohl's Cash, the perfect way to save and stay in style for Back to School 2016. That's great. I can look like I have money, which will give me credibility when I'm bullying the poor kids to to cover up my own insecurities. Wow, Mike, bullying isn't cool. Way to ruin the ad. You're not cool either, Kyle. Ding, ding. Boom. There it goes. Wow. Yeah. You know what? Wow. If we clean that up a little bit, a couple quick edits, maybe a jump cut here or there, maybe a, a flashy sound effect. Put put like a bell ringing in the background. Right, some, a school some kids, bell. Yeah, maybe a, a lunch lady. Right. Well, I'm an artist, Kyle, so I'm not going to censor myself for for the almighty dollar. Sorry. Well, I, we're selling out the Coles, Mike. I mean, if you want to do that, I hear Bill McAllister's available. You go find him. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> um, but Kyle, the only time in my life I enjoyed going back to school um, was college. Because it, you know, it didn't feel like school. You know, um, we went to commuter college. Or the student radio station was our college experience. Yeah. So, you know, when we got back to school, I really enjoyed it. And you were also kind of back in the routine. Right, exactly. Uh, my girlfriend and I broke up at the beginning of one of the summers, so I was g- glad to come back. Uh, well, it is back to school day, and this was put out by... These numbers were put out by the Michigan League for Public Policy on just how much universities are fleecing students in the state of Michigan. And it shows the amount of the the percentage of tuition increases from 2003 to now. Back in 2003, if you graduated in 2003 from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. How much do you think uh, a, a degree would would cost you if you graduated in two thousand three? For all four years? Yes. Uh, well, it's Michigan, so it's going to be high still. Yeah. So, I'm going to say probably eighty grand. Back in two thousand three, 
it would have cost you $29,000. Wait, what? In 2015, it's it's $55,000. Hold on. Where, which, where's, what's my numbers here? Uh, what do you mean? Ron, right. how was I that far off? The cost, uh, I don't know. Uh, because, <laughs> look, be- because Michigan fan brags that it's lit, you know it's the best school in the world, so you think it's going to be way more expensive. Yeah, and they had the lowest increase from 2003 to 2015, only 91 percent. Our alma mater, Oakley University, that touts itself as the greatest bargain in education. If you graduated in 2003, how much do you think a four-year degree would it would have cost you from Oakland University in 2003? From, from Oakland, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Just throw out a number. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Four ten two two ten four thousand dollars. It's only an hour show. Come on. I don't know. Twelve grand. Close. Eighteen thousand one seventy one. If you graduated in twenty fifteen, Kyle, how much do you think an education from Oakland University would have cost you? I don't know. Forty something grand. Forty four thousand with an increase of one hundred and forty three percent. And every time. A tuition in hike happened at Oakland University. They had always justified it's still the greatest deal in the state of Michigan. Well, now it's more expensive than graduating from Saginaw Valley, from Western Michigan, from Eastern Michigan, from Ferris State, Grand Valley State, Lake Superior State. You might as well go away to college now. Yeah. And this is the fleecing of our generation. We are going to be the only generation that do worse than our parents and worse than our kids. Because of this, and it, it, it's it's not going to change until people start realizing what a scam higher education is now. I I think yeah, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to see like a mass exodus, and, and by that I mean you're going to see more people going to vocational schools right. or community colleges, which is again, as I've said before on this show, I wish. I had done before going to a university. Well, it's funny, Kyle, because um, as I was watching *Mary of the Children* yesterday, I was I was kind of reflecting back on uh, on on television shows when we were growing up, and your mechanics, your plumbers, you know, your skilled tradesmen, your construction workers were all portrayed as being dumb meatheads. Right. And now in 2016, you look at these guys and said, "Holy shit, these guys are making six figures and have no student loan debt. These guys are the smart ones. We're the suckers." Yeah. Well, like me with my journalism degree, I mean... Right, your blog will have great grammar, and you'll yeah. make no money. I mean, it's it's like I've fallen through the cracks of society, I mean, as far as, as someone in my demographic can. Right. I mean, you know, it's like I'm not dead or in jail. Right. Uh, but, but you're also not marketable. But at the same time, it's like, seriously, like I'm out there looking for a new job right now, that is going to sustain me at a living wage while I go back to get my master's degree, which right. is more money down the drain. Because, seriously, I can't find any jobs out there right now that aren't asking for a master's degree. I'm almost considering going to a trade school. Well, because if I go to a trade school, it'll cost less money. You'll get you. You'll probably it'll get, get me certified. Right. You'll be paid while you learn. And I'll probably be paid better. You I'm, know, right. I'll be paid for an apprenticeship. I won't right. be paid for an internship. Right. Well, what about a communication degree, Kyle? I, t- I got my communication degree, and anyone anyone who gets a communication degree, they're, they're, they are served that line of BS. Oh, it's so versatile. You could go into public relations. You could go into the media. And, and now, you know, myself included, if I find out someone has a communication degree, I see a giant S on their forehead for sucker. Yeah, M- myself included. I Look, mean, I'm I'm trying like hell to make something out of nothing with all this, right? Because the big mistake that I made, I think, aside from not, I think if if I could, if there, I mean, there are several missteps. It depends on where I want to go back in time and change them. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, but I think one thing. Uh, that I, I, I think really looking back was, you know, not being more aggressive in my search immediately after I left. Right. You know, immediately after I graduated. Because one difference between me and one difference between a handful of my peers, and not that I can say everybody that I worked with at the school newspaper has been successful, 
Uh, oddly, I'm the only one at the student radio station that hasn't found some sort of job or anything at a radio station. Anyway, uh, but uh, is that a lot of them went out of market right. after they graduated. A couple of them stayed, and they've had menial jobs. A few of them, a couple of them are still writing high school newspaper you know, high school sports. Right. You know, and I don't know how much they're making. I can't imagine they're making much more than I am. If if you know. even as much. And they're probably and they're working Saturday mornings, Friday nights. Right. You know, tough hours, tough deadlines and stuff like that. I can't imagine it's very good work. You know what I mean? Right. So really I, I guess like with my journalism degree, you know, or maybe I should have looked towards PR you know, so many journalists are going into PR now. Right. And I don't want to, yeah. but it's like maybe that's what I have to do because the the two are merging. Well, right. Now, you could be a brand journalist, but he, here's the thing, okay? And and there, pe- there there's people out there who have a point, you know? We racked up these student debts, racked up these student loans. Nobody forced us to take these student loans. And, and, you know, if you promise to pay them back, you should pay them back. But just because just because we're being fleeced voluntarily doesn't mean we're not getting fleeced. Doesn't mean we're not getting ripped off. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, look, congratulations. You sold a, a bunch of naive 18-year-old kids a bunch of, of bill of goods, and now they're stuck paying the bill. Good for you. It's our fault, but still. But still, we're being ripped off. Right. So uh, we got to take a quick break. It's Turn the Radio Off on the Internet. Turn the Radio Off with Mike Parsons. No drug dealers living next to me. Pretty good deal. Kyle Bauer. Uh, yeah. People hate my podcast.com. <laughs> Turn the radio off. Tell your friends about us. Make them like us on Facebook. I am not sure if uh, we are broadcasting properly. Turn the radio off. Online and worldwide. TTROshow.com. All right, so I thought the the whole Colin Kaepernick thing would be over by now. And for the most part, it it is. And I got to be honest, Kyle, when it first came out, I didn't care either way. You know, I didn't really have a problem with the people who are criticizing him for the same reason I didn't have a problem with what he did. You know, they're both they, they're both exercising their First Amendment right. Um, you know, the only, I, I guess I only have a couple of questions. Here's my first issue. The only the only issue I had were are with the people who, uh, you know, they do their refrain. If you don't love this country, you can get the hell out. <laughs> well, okay, that, that's like the least American response that you can have. That, that's, that's less American than s- sitting down for the national anthem. Because, number one, our country was founded as a form of protest against the Church of England and, and eventually uh, against the British Empire itself. Number two, a lot of great things have happened through the uh through protest uh segregation was over uh what was you know ended women received the right to vote and if you just say well if uh, if you don't like segregation you get the hell out if you don't like women not having the right to vote you can get the hell out it, it's it's like look he's not saying he hates the country he's saying he, you know he's saying he likes the country all right but he sees a problem that needs to be fixed that's like if i come to you kyle and i say kyle do you know a good repairman my furnace blew and you say mike if you don't love this house you get the hell out hmm. but but kyle I, I like the house there's just some things that could make it no 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 every time there's no heat you people play the broken furnace card maybe you should go live in a house with no furnace and see how you like like it that's exactly what it's like. That's a great analogy. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, it's – I, I don't know. Look, okay, my questions are – a lot of people are like, well, you know, and I agree with what he's saying, but that's not the way to do it. Or or that that's not uh, – he's not the messenger for this message. Well, okay, white America, who is the designated black guy that you're comfortable 
with hearing about race relations from. And just because he's making a lot of money in the NFL doesn't mean that he can't speak up against issues that, that he sees out there. Yeah, that that's one thing that always really perturbed me about this is I think it's actually more impressive that right. someone who's making $19 million a year is speaking out on this because so many times you'll only hear people speak out for a charity that personally affects them right. or something that personally affects them. It's too many times people struggle with empathy in this country, the ability to understand something that doesn't directly affect them, to, to get down on someone else's level or to look at something from someone else's perspective. I think it's admirable that Kaepernick, who was uh, adopted into a white middle-class family uh, was able to receive an athletic scholarship at right. Nevada, have his college paid for, and then make it to the NFL, all in hard work, make it to a Super Bowl, get a $19 million a year contract, is still able, from his perch, look back and say, I could have easily been swept up into that foster system, into poverty. I could have easily been one of these black kids on the street targeted by police. Things could have very easily went the other way for me, and they're going the other way for for people who look like me. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the people who aren't making $19 million a year because there's a lot more right. people in this country not making $19 million a year. Right. And I you, think it's a beautiful sentiment. And you think just because Colin Kaepernick— um, it, also, it's it's uh, it, it's amazing at how many people don't know how to pronounce Kaepernick. I've heard <laughs> Kaepernick, but anyway, uh, you know, I, I think it's incredible that uh, that uh, suddenly uh, making nineteen million dollars a year takes away your right to speak. Right, exactly. You just shut up and take that paycheck. Yeah, but you know, you don't think that Colin Kaepernick, um, you know, never faced. A side eye in a store growing up with white parents. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you don't think that um, he's ever been prejudged um, by his appearance because he now makes $19 million a year. And, 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 you know, it's the same people who are like, oh, what's going on in Ferguson is disgusting. Yeah, what's going on in Baltimore? You know what? You're doing more damage to your community looting and rioting, which is true. Which is true. Uh, you know, there's better ways to do it. Peaceful protest is the way, the way to do it. And then, you know, sitting down during the national anthem is peaceful protest. Uh, anything other than rioting and looting and sitting down during the national anthem. It's like, it, it, it's like okay, what, what's the point of protest, all right? For people to hear what you're saying. And for two weeks, the entire country was talking about nothing but Colin Kaepernick and, 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 and kind of, you know, his, his issues – with the state of race relations in the United States. To me, that was probably the most effective one-time protest that I can remember. Yeah, and and again, I, this has nothing to do with the military. A lot of military folks are taking it personal, and, saying you know it's what, an insult they fought for. A lot, for. A lot uh, aren't. There's, um, some are, some aren't. I've seen a lot of stories out there saying that, you know, there's a lot of vets out there who are— um, who are supporting Colin Kaepernick's right to speak out because that's what you know that that's one of the liberties that they've been fighting for overseas. Yeah, and and I've you know and I've I've found a couple stories like that myself and um you know it's it's funny uh because I personally would never sit down during the national anthem. Right. Uh, and, and I myself have, have never, you know, like I've, I, I've stood for the national anthem different ways. Sure. Sometimes I just remove my hat. Sometimes right. I just bow my head. I've never, you know, like I've sometimes put my hand over my heart and, and I've never been, you know, called into question. It, it's funny how there are people who I, I guess now have just taken this so seriously when there have been times when. I've seen people talking through right. it. I've seen I've seen other people. I've seen people at NASCAR races of all places. Now oh. think about this. Before the Colin Kaepernick thing, I saw people at NASCAR races sitting down talking on their phones and stuff during the national anthem. So trust me, this is definitely a race thing. Right. This is, you know, getting your lane N word. Right. That's what this is. Well, and, and look, yeah. 
I'm with you. I, I'll always stand for the national anthem. But but that's because of my personal experience. Right. Well, you know, I grew, I, I was born in America. Yeah, my my. I ex- was male. I was white. I was middle class. I have four of the five lottery numbers when it comes to the game of life. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, I, I think people um, who don't have all those lottery numbers, who aren't white, male, middle class, um, straight. They say, hey, look, you know what? Um, I would like the same rights as this guy. And, you know, that flag, that flag um, guarantees them all these liberties. I don't feel like I, I, I don't feel like I'm guaranteed all those liberties. And uh, Megan Rapinoe uh, is a soccer player on the U.S. women's team. Uh, she recently was in solidarity with Colin Kaepernick before one of her soccer matches kneeling. And, and that's what she said was that she doesn't feel like she's had the same liberties and rights and privileges underneath that flag as uh, you know as a woman and as a, as a lesbian right you know and she's right you know so I mean <laughs> that's that's what it is I right. mean well, their experiences are different than ours right she wasn't allowed to get married for right. years. You know, I mean, Colin Kaepernick has been targeted differently or treated differently by the police. And as as a person of color, looking back at the history of his people, we're seen as uh, three-fifths a person, um, you know, had to own land, you know, in order to vote. I mean, and also until the Civil Rights Act, you know, Jim Crow law. I mean, these are things that as people— we haven't had to face down, um, and our experiences are different. That's why I don't have a problem standing for the anthem, and uh, I don't mind. But if someone chooses to to sit out the anthem out of political protest, more power to them. Well, and, and the least, and if it's someone like Kaepernick or Rapino or even even someone else who just wants to do it out of solidarity with them. I that's their right. I'm not going to infringe upon it. Good well, for them. Well, look, and, and of course, people have the First Amendment right to criticize them as well. But I think the least you can do is at least hear them out before getting indignant. Hear them out and then make the decision. And, um, you know, I, I think that, um, you, you know, I, I don't think it was much about veterans, except for the fact that some people would argue the flag represents the veterans because Colin Kaepernick didn't really speak out against veterans and he didn't really implicitly call out police but he did it in a roundabout way and it it, it was quite obvious and what I do have a problem with is now the Santa Clara Police Union they're saying that they will no longer patrol 49ers games if Colin Kaepernick doesn't uh, doesn't apologize, <laughs> and and I have a real problem with this uh, because yeah. you know even I say it, Kyle, and, and you hear the refrain, okay? Don't 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 paint all cops with a broad brush based on a few bad apples. Well, okay, but by the same token, so you're you're going to ask for that, which which I you know I'm I'm more than happy to grant that courtesy, but then you're going to refuse. To protect a whole stadium full of people because one guy didn't stand up during the national anthem because one guy criticized bad police officers. So what are you saying? He spoke out against police brutality and you support police brutality? I mean, of course not. But it's, you know, look, I I, I mean, uh, police officers, they have to do a lot of unsavory things, right? They have to they have to um, patrol a Westboro Baptist Church protest. Yeah, just to make sure that things stay safe, and they have to go in, into riots sometimes. Right, that are, where they're the target. Right, and, and so this poli- these poli- this police union is going to say, "Oh well, you know what? That stadium's on their own because Colin Kaepernick hurt our feelings." <laughs> Ridiculous. Now, right? yeah. Now, now, now. To be fair, to be fair, um, that is uh, th- that's a separate deal from the city of of San Francisco. The 49ers pay the police union and those officers work those hours on their all off time. So the 49ers could easily go and hire a private security firm and but it's like it's like come on. It's like you know, so a guy exercises his first amendment rights and he says something uh about you uh, about, you know, your bad apples, but the whole 
union's going to get upset because he's speaking out against people who make your profession look bad. So you're defending the bad apples. And not only are you defending the bad apples, but you're also, as a branch of the government, which is what the police are, Right. people forget that, as a branch of the government, uh, you're infringing on someone's constitutional right to criticize a branch of the government. Imagine yeah. if a congressman was criticized publicly or a senator or a governor was criticized by a professional athlete, one lone professional athlete, and said, oh, it said I'm not doing my job anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Can you imagine? Well, and, and like I said, to be fair, this isn't part of the normal police duties. This is something extra they but do on their off time still, for a little extra money. But still, it, 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 it sends and, a bad precedent. And, and it's, there's it, also a lot. That it's a can, temper tantrum. And there's also, and, and also, while it hasn't been as prominent in, in the year that they've been in Santa Clara, still, there have been many incidents in the past with San Francisco fans, and especially now that Los Angeles fans are going to be back in the mix, Oakland fans as well. There's a lot of bad blood there, and there's a lot of history of fan violence. Yeah. Okay? So they do serve a purpose right. while being there. The only the only people who I can see having a legitimate gripe are the people who are upset that the NFL didn't allow the Dallas Cowboys to put that patch on for the five police officers who were killed in the line of duty in Dallas. No, not well, that's to... typical NFL BS. Right. But yeah. I, I can see those people I can see those people being upset about Colin Kaepernick not facing any but you know, I, what I say is that is that you know Kaepernick should be free to to uh, to protest the way he feels, and the Cowboys should be free to pay protest uh, pay pay um pay their respects pay pay homage to those five police yeah, officers. Yeah, but, but that's the NFL. I right. mean, I mean the, the NFL is is governed in tyranny. You know. Well, I, I, I there is one silver lining to to this whole Kaepernick thing, and it's that it seems like. The internet is waking up to just how annoying Tommy Lauren is, or Tommy Lauren, or whatever. She's this. Uh, she she's that. Uh, she's that cute blonde from the Blaze who she's become the uh, voice of white offended indignation. Oh, and yeah. uh, and she she goes on these rants that are obviously read off a teleprompter and she's just saying all the pandering stuff that you get from you know your 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 conservative media. Um, you know, pretty much telling Kaepernick that, oh, well, if you hate America, give back those 14 million American dollars. And it's just like, <sighs> it's like, and, and people, you know, she started off okay, right? She started off, her b- first big rant was about supporting the troops, and, and that's fine. You know, I, I support the troops and everything, uh, in, in theory, um, you know, is it, it, I, I you know I, I I I admire the people who um, sign up and do this unsavory, dangerous work. But of course, then she started kind of getting more and more into this. Uh, as my friend Rogelio Castillo, who's going to be with us next week, uh, she starts getting into this polite racism, where it's not it's not overt, but she's like, oh well, black people, uh, why do you riot when when somebody shoots? Up uh, when, when a police officer shoots someone up who should have been listening to him. Don't you know that in Chicago, black people are killing each other and, and all this stuff? And it's, it's just, I've tried blocking her, her and Nicole Arbor. I just tried filtering them both out of my. Um, out of my Facebook feed, but they keep popping up. And Kyle, you don't seem familiar with her. Count yourself uh, I saw, lucky. I saw a, uh, I saw a screen cap of her. Um, right, like sometime along last week, she kind of turned into a meme. Right. Uh, I guess where she got into my feed, but just as a meme, where they had her screen cap making a really like grotesque, strained face as she was spewing out a word. Right. And, and, and the meme was when someone's about to tell you that you're the real racist. Yeah. 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 So like, right. that's, that's, Oh, cause racists love telling people that and I'm not sure if she's racist. I honestly, I think she's, I think she's just someone catering to a demographic. And she knows she has a bit and she's working it. Right. Exactly. I mean like, but see, here's the thing. <laughs> if you watch one of her videos, I never want to hear her, that Obama teleprompter hot take come out of her mouth because she is the worst prompter reader I've ever read. I've ever seen. I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the blaze. Pretty much anyone affiliated with that is so bad. It's a sinking ship. 
Yeah, Thank and God. and I mean that's that's the, I mean, I think that's the whole crux of like this this whole, uh, really as we've and I know we've gone almost an entire show without mentioning a mic. And I'm uh, sorry. I just dropped the T word. It's forty nine minutes in. We've done good. I, I was just gonna say that this whole thing where like you've seen a lot of conservative pundits try to align themselves and sink on the ship with Trump. And it's funny because it's exposed just how bad they are right. when their ass gets shown and how they can't, how they just really have no recovery skill. Right. You know, or they have real, no real decorum when well, you really put back them into a corner. Well, you know what? They, they can't fight they are, their way out. They're betas who don't want to get a wedgie from the bully. That's who they are. If they're, yeah. if they're the bully's crony, then he's not going to bully them. Uh, They're yeah. going to help him shove other people in the lockers so that they don't get shoved into a and locker. And they thought that they were, and through the primaries, I think they thought that they were a part, they were part of the pack during right. the primaries. Right. And and they were all strutting around thinking, oh, yeah, we, we you know, we, we lined ourselves up with the winner. We got this. We're kicking everyone's ass. Get out of the way, Rubio. Get out of the way, Gia Jeb. You know, they were the ones handing out the wedgies. And then once they got to the real actual election and saw everything, you know, just backfire on them right. like this, that's when you see folks at publications like The Blaze, you know, and Breitbart and all this, you know, like I said, their ass gets shown. Right. You know, their pants get pulled down and their ass gets shown and, and they get turned into embarrassing memes. They get busted for sexual harassment, you know, and their whole little media empire completely falls apart. There is, though, there is a reviled political pundit I'm, I want to defend for a second. I got to tell you, Kyle, I've never been a fan of these roasts on Comedy Central. They just, I don't know. They're, I like the Bob Saget roast because I like Bob Saget and I like Norm MacDonald. If those guys aren't on, on a roast, then that I don't care. And even Bob Saget, you know, I, I get it. You're Danny Tanner, you swear now. But uh, I guess the other night, the roast of Rob Lowe, which maybe Rob Lowe was um, being uh, being celebrated for his fantastic direct TV commercials. I don't know, but but he get his work on Parks and Rec was good. I yeah, didn't like that. He was great in Wayne's World, but he's just he like the Charlie Sheen roast made sense because Charlie Sheen was was very relevant at the time, and Ann Coulter was one of the roasters, and um, I've got to say. I want it, all over the place. It says Ann Coulter bombs at the um, Rob Lowe roast, and I watched her roast, and actually, she had a few stinkers in there, but her jokes weren't that bad. Um, there was one where um, Nikki Glaser, she's this uh, this comedian who I never found that funny, but you know she's she's a rising star. She's probably the next Amy Schumer, who will be big for. 18 months and then kind of implode. Uh, but <laughs> Ann Coulter made a joke about, hey, if you ever want to become famous in Hollywood, if you ever want to know who to sleep with to become famous in Hollywood, Nikki Glaser has the entire contact list. Pretty funny. And, and you know what? They were showing the other shots taken against Ann Coulter, and uh, they were way worse. And then she made another joke about how um, uh, Rob Lowe should have been the one who got AIDS in front instead of Charlie Sheen. I mean, it was it was uh, it was uh, it, it, it was delivered better. But you know, it's a roast, okay? And, and and roast things get ugly. And I thought those two jokes were kind of funny. But there is no way Ann Coulter could have won that room over. Yeah, I'm surprised that they would have even brought her. Like, who booked her for that? Well. On inside Even it, Peyton Manning got in a good dig on her. Did he? What did he say? Yeah, he said you. He, he said something uh, to the effect of what you've authored seven books, uh, one of them being Mein Kampf. Or, or, <laughs> That's pretty good. Which was surprising coming from Peyton Manning, right. who's a noted conservative. Right, and he's so you know he's so uh, you know he's so milk toast because he he wants to be marketable. But well, I can understand booking. Um, booking Ann Coulter because today all the buzz is about how much she bombed and how much other people took shots at her. And and a lot of the shots against her were were really funny. But I feel like if it was someone who was more well liked and look, I'm not gonna sit here and cry for poor Ann Coulter, okay? She 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 signed her deal with the devil. 
you know, she knows exactly what she is. You know, it did, it, she, she's, she's a tough, soulless chick. It didn't hurt her feelings because she has no feelings. But I just feel like if it was a, parent, yes. I, I feel like if it was a better liked person, those jokes would have gone over well. Yeah, probably. Uh, but but I, that's another thing. How she even got booked for that? Like how? Well, well, they, well actually, they, though, to to I keep forgetting though that Rob Lowe isn't. He's kind of. Um, I want to call him a conservative, but I keep forgetting that he's not actually like a. Uh, yeah. Like far left, like liberal. You right. know what I mean? Like he's he's actually kind of a moderate. I keep forgetting yeah. about that. Well, I think he's donated to both parties. Right. Well. So maybe that's how that happened. And I, I guess I respect that uh, I, I, on the surface. I, I don't know his political views, but if he's donated to both parties, at least it shows that he can think for himself. But uh, Ann Coulter was on Inside Edition, and she said she went on because they were allowing her to um, uh, promote her no, new book that was filleting Donald Trump. I forgot what the name of it was. And if you're Comedy Central, you're going you're gonna to want that lightning rod on your show. Because the buzz the next day is going to be all about uh, how that person bombed and how everyone got great digs in on her. So it makes sense. It yeah. makes sense. And honestly, all these all these rows should have one person everybody hates. I would love to see Tommy Lauren uh, just lambasted at one of these <laughs> things. <laughs> well, I can't say I know her well enough, but based on what she told me, sure. Yeah, okay. All right, uh, we got to go. Hopefully we're back next week. Well, I'll be back next week. Kyle, hopefully you're back next week. We'll have uh, my good buddy, Rogelio Castillo, in. He was supposed to fill in for you last week, and something came up. So I said, let's just do a three-man circle jerk when Kyle gets back. So that's what we're going to do. Well, that'll be fun. Kyle, enjoy oh boy. <laughs> Enjoy driving that big uh, red middle finger to your dad for the next, what is it, two-year lease? Oh, I got a three-year on that. Uh, oh, three years to really stick it to your dad. Uh, it's going to cost you an extra, let's see, 35 times 36. What's that? But it's worth it. It's worth it. Oh, it's all worth it. 35 times 36. Somebody help me out. Oh, I guess the only person down here. Now I got to Google calculate for this. <laughs> we don't have a calculator on your phone. No. What? My phone sucks. I thought that was like a basic hold on here. I did too until I bought this phone. All right, so let's see. 35 at uh, $1260. Wow. Next week. It'll be worth it. Next week, we'll talk about all <laughs> all the things Kyle could have bought with $1260. Let's turn the radio off. Thanks for listening, Paul. Bye.